ETH is the clear asset that should have the second ETF. I'm, I'm telling you, these things get denied. I think they're just going to look for to kick the can down the road a little bit further. How do we ensure that the American investor is protected? Everybody you talked to said there was no comments from the SEC. We were about to log off. I nearly fell out of my chair. I can't, I can't deal with another false alarm, David. It's approved. Shut up. Let's rock it up. Let's go. It was like different rooms. And so like if you join a room, you could send me a link. Yeah, and I'll join yeah the I think room. the link works so you can directly send it. I think I'm in the wrong building. So the uh, ETTF uh, got approved out of nowhere about halfway through the hackathon, but no one actually even reacted. Uh, they were just heads down building. I'm good with pressure. I think pressure makes people work harder. I don't really feel any nerves. I'm pretty confident. Day one was a lot of like no's, 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 but like then like it kept on getting better and better. Can I show people the magic of using it? How can I make things nicer looking, make it easier to use? Imran and Chow said, okay, it's time to build. Focus, get your heads down. We didn't see the sunlight for like five, six days. We didn't leave the hotel for like, you know, nearly a week. But you know, when you gotta get shit done, you gotta get shit done. Yeah, I would say a different time pressure because I went to build like a tons of years, but they're only two weeks. So we're almost at the halfway point in the hack farm. Yeah. Is there anything you want to see differently over the next few days that you haven't seen? It's time to shift. Getting in the hand of, of the users and learn, learn from them. The vast majority, except for one, you have a good idea. Every one of us thinks we're the one. How many teams pivot during the accelerator? I want to say half of them. But a, a bad idea is not the end of the world. If you remember, one of the first questions I ask you is, who's your co-founder? And I'll be very candid. Most of you do not have a good team composition. There's three scenarios. The best is working with a co-founder that you've known for a very long time, long-standing, good long-standing relationship, past coworker, or a friend, family member, a brother, sister, a cousin. The second best is actually being solo. The worst is working with someone that you just met. Your first six months is this quote unquote honeymoon period. Everything goes well, no matter what problems you face, what challenges you face. But after that honeymoon period, you're gonna start arguing with each other. And you need to think very carefully about that because a lot of you are in that third category and you're smiling. For us, the founder is always the product. Do they think about the product properly? Can they execute? The current idea usually is secondary. If we believe in that idea, great. If we don't, then we can help them pivot. What we look for is insights. Can he open up our minds to something that we've never like learned about? When there's an aha moment, then I'm like, okay, he is actually pretty good. That's what we look for. Founders who can think through problems properly. It's about relationships, right? That's one of the biggest aspects I think that can make startups successful. Me and Vesh, we met. Eight years ago, I was organizing hackathons back in the day, and Vish attended one of them. And yeah, we just kept in touch. This is the first time we worked together in person. I was a bit surprised by how collaborative it's been. It's definitely gotten a lot better over the last few days. We're making progress for sure. We both have really similar perspectives on the space. And so this gave us the opportunity to just like get to know each other better because we hadn't like worked like this closely together. I have a rule. You don't found a company with anyone that you haven't seen go through hell. You've got to build it with people where you're seeing them in the lows, not just the highs. On day one, I like had no idea what we were going to build. I had some information from Jin about like what he was interested in and what projects he had done in the past and like ideas that he was thinking about. I really didn't know what to expect in terms of like what he wanted to work on for this. It's a natural evolution in our journey as an early stage team where you're still finding product market fit. So you're testing several ideas. Product market fit is when your users love your product. Not only are they using your product, paying for your product, but they love it so much that they organically 
tell their friends about your product. When you have real product market fit, it's unmistakable. The money, the revenue is piling up in your bank account. I think to last long, you kind of have to believe that what you do for work is potentially beneficial for other people. This kind of relationship could last years. I think winning is that we develop a co-founder relationship over time. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on that. <laughs> I think people in crypto are smart. So if they see you like just following a playbook, just copying someone else, they're going to realize like, oh, that's not original. So that's not something that really like catches my attention. The first person to do it always works the best too. The first airdrops were all the most successful. And a lot of our founders are more like they meet each other, they're hackathons and things like that. What do you say to founders? Is there like some sort of stress test that they can do? All the people involved have to be good at communication. I think it'd be really hard to be a solo founder. We could never have done it. If you want to build like a long-term company, you have to have some sort of alignment. It's a marriage. Yeah. Like starting a company with someone else is a marriage. It's having a kid, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not telling them, hey, you guys need to break up today. Yeah. What I tell them is statistically, founders who just met each other don't have a long-standing working relationship together are less likely to succeed. What is their typical reaction when you say that? Like, they're, they're shocked. Like, they, they're shocked. There's like a lot of people that are very passionate about crypto. People basically like learn about crypto and go down the rabbit hole and never really come out. But also getting started out, it can be pretty lonely because people inherently are social animals and they want to be part of something bigger. It's a bigger flex to be like a very lean team than a team of a lot of people. Four people are working on this uh, product, maybe five, yeah. Uh, right now, five people are working on this product. We also have a front-end developer based in China. I like Chris, but his team composition is in GMI. Not gonna make it. Too many team members, and he doesn't even code. He spends all his time coordinating the rest of the team. My goal is to build a successful product that I truly believe in. Yeah, if investing more money helps, then I will just do it. Each month, it's about 10 to 15 K. Why? Why are you paying them? It will be faster. OK, let's do some internal uh, reorg. <laughs> this is more important than, than the product itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, you got to fire people. Chow thinks our team has too many people. So his suggestion is that I should not have that many people. They're not your friends. They're not your past coworkers. You don't have a long standing relationship with them. If you join our accelerator and you come with this team, the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do is to fire everyone. No one should be managing people. So hopefully you can make some changes next week. I don't want to distract ourselves by cutting down people. I will keep that in mind, but uh, yeah. We're still trying to get just the, the basic gameplay down. That's sort of step one. What we're concerned about is that we feel like we'll need to do a lot of experimentation with the sort of gamification mechanisms that are built on top of the gameplay, but we can't really experiment there until the gameplay works. And so this is sort of blocking us from exploring the area that we really need to focus on. Jay, I appreciate your input. I think I, uh, it's super I think we kind of have different working style. I am more collaborative person while Thomas is more independent. So we kind of like need to tweak our communication protocol to stay aligned. We're on like different sleep schedules. And I think when it was more asynchronous, that was totally fine. I'm probably trying to experiment more. And I think Julie is, is a bit more, let's figure out what we're going to build first and then build it. It could be going better, but it's, it's okay. We're, you know, we're making progress. We're moving in the right direction. There's still a lot of time left, but there is some time pressure to get this done. If you have a shot, I think there's something here. It's just if we can get there fast enough to show that there's something worth so. We are having an existential crisis. We've had to roll back our code. We're going to be much more ahead. We basically lost two days of work. We sort of went through the phases of like, you know, accepting, you know, this something we have to do. We have some bugs we want to fix. So it does crash. There's like a memory leak issue somewhere. We need to fix that. Yeah, so basically, if I win, this is what happens, right? So I see this screen. So congratulations, you know, you won. This is your score, your win-loss record. You won 1.2 Solana. You want to share it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I can also mint a soulbound NFT and have it sent to the loser's wallet. 
So the loser knows that I beat them for the rest of their life. Yeah, we have some even more exciting news though. So we, did, we obviously did a test to see who won or who lost. Yours truly won the, the Genesis challenge. So the first ever one I won and I can prove it because we literally got the data, value five, value five. So that means we both did the exercise, uh -huh. right? Nick's and Vish, but my winnings are 30. His winnings are zero. One why his winnings are zero? Cause I fucking beat him. We went for a run. The challenge was who can do one K run and whoever logged it first wins. So yeah, I literally sprinted. Fuck, I'll never forgive you this. Actually, I'll never forgive you Ash the other day. And I'm laughing. And I just tell him I was never losing. Testing, testing, A, B, C. We've encountered an error. Oh wait, it rejected the transaction. And it's not connecting to Coinbase wallet. Guys, for some reason, SpearPay is taking ages to load inside the app. Uh, this is so bad. Okay, yeah. can we just stop? One second. People are very lonely in this country. Almost everybody is on a dating app. New Yorkers, they are friendly, right? Like they, they don't like say, I shoo you away. Yes. You know, they give you some time and talk to you about it. I could walk into Subway, talk to people. I could walk into Washington Park, talk to people. I could go down here and talk to people. There's one girl sitting there. I asked her, hey, what brings you here? She, was, she said, I'm people watching. And I heard that phrase for the first time in my life. What is people watching? <laughs> I'm building like this one app, which I'm building for like very serious traders, people who want a loyal relationship. I'm also like, here talking to a lot of DJs, talking to a lot of crypto native people. And then it occurred to me like, there has to be like a completely different app for people with DJ mindset. The hell of ideas turning matching or a sick pig into a toe tit. The work. The new product is tokenizing someone's uh, inbox. This is going to be competing with OnlyFans, not, not Tinder. Everybody who heard this step, they are like different the thing. This is the thing there. This is going to happen. You should sign up to, to OnlyFans and then Vampire Attack pass them to, to come to your product. I want to build products that will put a smile on people's face. Who will be the number one MVP? I don't know. What I'm most excited about is the dating app, but I also like the tokenized uh, prediction market. By yeah, day. Yeah. I'll also say uh, decentralized poker. Here are my uh, curveballs. MT with the buy now, pay later. I don't know. Okay, I think Chris has a chance. I'm not sure about the product, but I like the guy. I like the guy too. If he's able to fire the team, he has a chance. He has a chance, okay. All right, well, tomorrow we'll see who will remain and then see what happens. Ten years ago, I wired my entire net worth to an offshore sports betting website. The U.S. banking system does not like it. And so my money was frozen for half a year. I realized Bitcoin could have solved this problem because Bitcoin is permissionless. So it clicked. I actually went to one of the first research meetups. Instantly, I applied it like the only two jobs that you can at the time, which was Coinbase and BitPay. And I was lucky enough to do uh, a consulting project for Coinbase. And then like fast forward 2019, a lot of founders were getting rejected. And one of the big things that was lacking at the time was liquidity. In finance, liquidity refers to how efficiently buyers and sellers can exchange stocks, tokens, or other assets for cash without significantly impacting their price. If a crypto has low liquidity, that means the price may swing wildly as it's bought and sold, which increases risk. What we thought about was, why don't we get more institutions involved into DeFi? And that's kind of the ground story of how Alliance started. And since then, we didn't look back. Helping 50 startups a year, going from zero, from scratch, to product market fit. We sponsored two hackathons, one in India and one in New York. New York is the best place in the entire world for crypto. Alliance has become a well-oiled machine. A lot of founders that do apply to our program, backgrounds are excellent, but the ideas are horrible. And they have no one else to rely on. I mean, we will be like a spare co-founder for them. And for some that are solo, we actually are the co-partners. Yeah. 
working alone certainly has <laughs> pros and cons. I can move very fast. I never really feel blocked or like, what should I do next? Because there's always so many things. But then also you can tend to get stuck, right? And that can end up taking like an hour. I found that talking with the people here is actually directly applicable to what I was working on. Going at this solo, it's just like, I have to switch back and forth of like, and now I'm in like business mode and now I'm in like technical mode, you know? Once you have the MVP, it might be good for you to show it to users, going over the demo. Yeah. And seeing if this is something that they've used. Yeah. We're getting feedback from there. Being brutally honest, right? They gotta be brutally honest. The hardest part about being solo. It's yeah. feedback loop. Yeah, getting the feedback loop. Yeah, like, feedback loop is harder. You can change your product, but like you can change your co-founder, so that's super important. It's only under the stress, you'll figure out who this person truly is. I think I can probably do it alone. If I find someone, it's like, it's great, but I don't think it's necessary. I think the most valuable part is the people that you get to work with. You know, I'm solo right now, so, you know, as you can imagine, the journey is kind of lonely, but you feel like you're working with a bigger group. And I think having a co-founder also means that you're less likely to try different things because you also have someone else to worry about, right? To convince them, to get them on the same page. So it ta that takes time, right? And then if you're a solo, you get to do a lot of that quicker. I'm able to move really quickly, probably way quicker than I would if I was working with somebody else, to be honest. Everybody kind of sees success when, oh, a founder does really well. There's a lot of times there's like huge journey behind them for them to get to that point, right? Build fast, fail fast, fail often. We hope that the feedback we've given them is enough such that they can build out their MVP. And the final day will be a pitch. Why they're building this, how does the product work, and how does it impact crypto? If you guys want to become founders, you know, we want to give you all the tools, all the guardrails in place. By Friday morning, we will have a demo of the MVP, but it's also going to be a stress test to see if you guys are ready to be founders. The feedback that we gave you over the week, whether it's team dynamics, whether it's product, the way I would think about today is it's kind of like a, a fire alarm. If you haven't got your shit together, get your shit together. This is the whole point, to see if this is something that you could do. Everybody is working really hard. I definitely feel pressure. It's definitely competitive. You could tell this by how late people tend to stay. I need my demo sleep and beauty sleep. You know, submissions tomorrow. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> You know, there's still a lot to get done. We're having a little bit of trouble like narrowing down exactly how more we want to do. I'll ask people, how's the project going? And they're like, it's going. And I'm like, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I think I've decided to do something new, different from what I originally um, came to propose. Right now I'm in a pretty comfortable spot with the product, so I think I have a good amount of time to prepare for it. So I'm not really worried about the demo. We have another person in here who is like, oh, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it's been challenging, you know, for like a few nights, four or five AMs. We just got to pick something. My laptop literally died yesterday. And uh, some work that is on the laptop is gone. It's, oops, <laughs> it doesn't come back on. Yeah. Shit, it's waggy sometimes. What about the other teams? Do you have any good ideas? Whatever has to be done has been done already. No one or what can you get done? And then I vote to submit. Yeah. Just the last push. If a guy go in the demo tomorrow, get some bonus points. <laughs> You're done. You know, all the moving parts work. They don't break, but the app itself just crashes. I have you some hits. Okay, we're not done. We're close though. To win this one moment, this is the only thing that was worth living for in my life. And send. That's it. All right, this was hard because all of the products were incredible. I think at this point, it's, it's not even close for me. I gotta go up and say this publicly.